welcome back to Alaska Haven. Today is a very exciting day because guess what? The, as you guys know, we live by the water and today we heard the first crack of the ice. You know what that means? That means that spring is here. It finally has arrived. I love the winter. I absolutely love it. Starting in October all the way through December. Then there's January, February, March. It stays dark, it stays cold, and the snow just doesn't go away. But when you hear that first crack, that means it's coming. Because just as fast as the winter comes here in Alaska, the summer does too. So from a ton of snow, it's only going to take a couple of weeks. Through the mud season, it's going to be really muddy. And then we will have summer. And that is very exciting. And we have so many things planned this summer. But before all the snow melts, Steve is on a special mission today. While the kids and I are going to homeschool and um, do our Bible studies and, and learn, Steve is going with a friend of his from work all the way to Summit Lake and Fielding Lake to do some research for the military. And he has been excited like a little kid. But I told his friend Mike, please make sure he doesn't do anything crazy. And he ensured me, both of them ensured me they were going to use wisdom going on the ice because it is that time of the year that it can become dangerous and breaking through the ice can happen if you're not careful. So I think we're going to start homeschooling and enjoy the beautiful, peaceful morning and um, lunchtime and check on Steve in just a little bit to see what he is up to. Okay, we're taking a little school break to check in see what Steve's doing. It is 10.30 on the 20th and of March. And we're out here doing some ice thickness measurements for a unit that's out of New York for them to do some uh, C-130 landings. We went to Summit Lake and there's no way to get access to Summit Lake because it's complete whiteout conditions. There's probably about a 10 foot drop all the way around the lake and there's open water. I'm not risking anything for that. So we're out here at Paxton Lake now, and it's beautiful. It's 31 degrees though, but we're gonna we're about a mile from the lake. There's a road that we're gonna take down. We're gonna do some ice fishing, uh, some ice measurements with our ice fishing gear, and then we're gonna pack up and we're gonna go back up to Fielding Lake and go have lunch out there, and uh, go do some ice fishing for burbot while we're cooking lunch. Oh, we just got the snow machines unloaded. Got all the gear set up just for this lake. We're just gonna go check the ice dipness, so we're not gonna go fishing. So. We'll be back up here in less than an hour. We'll go plot out three holes and uh, see what we can't get. So here we are, Paxton Lake. We're gonna punch our first hole right here. Mike's doing a great job digging through a couple feet of snow to get down to ice. to uh, make the first hole. And then we'll go 1.1 miles that way, punch another hole, and then another 1.1 miles another, and punch another hole.
That's only 25 inches. Again, Mike's doing a great job. This is the second hole at Paxton Lake. <laughs> You're a great snow scooper. <laughs> so we're one mile from the first hole. Hole two. Success. So we just got done checking the ice thickness out here on Paxton Lake. It was a beautiful, warm drive, but I don't think this lake is going to meet their expectations. The thickest ice was was 26 inches. There was some overflow in a few spots. We had to speed up a couple times. We are heading to the next lake, but I don't think this is going to be what they need. So we're uh, going to head over to Fielding Lake now. So see you in a little while. So we made out to Fielding Lake. This is just the creek that ties it in together. And there's ducks already out there. We're going to go run out there and drill some holes and see if we can't ice fish while we cook some lunch. So here we are here at Fielding Lake and you can see Mike is still doing the same job. He's digging through the snow, but I dug this hole for the grill. The most important thing out here today. And you can see that's about two feet of snow and there's no slush on this water. Now there's Mike's new little baby grill for 17 bucks. Memories are priceless. And memories are priceless. And look at all these cabins that are down here now. Back when I came out here the first time, there was like one. Now there's almost 50 out here. Okay, so I heard that Steve is on his way back home. I'm very relieved because I was nervous the whole time to make sure that nothing happens to him because considering that he is on ice that is melting and testing to see if it's still strong enough, that doesn't sound so good. Um, I am going to go with Amy to the movie theater. There's a movie that's playing, so really excited about that. And tonight we're going to see what Steve found out doing his research and to see how that helps um, to provide um, a better way for transportation during times of emergency. So So this sweet date night turned into I am being quizzed by what magazine? Brio magazine. The Brio magazine. And you still have zero points. I have silly minutes. I have zero points. That's not so good, is it? That means you're doing all the wrong answers. <laughs> <laughs> So we're officially on our date night. We are watching... What? Unplanned. Unplanned. Can you believe it or not? But they brought the movie all the way up here to Fairbanks. And I think it it took a, a lot of work to be able to get it up here. A lot of convincing too. We don't get all those great movies up here. But we got tickets and we're really excited because abortion is something that's always been on Amy's heart. She wrote a bill about it. She contacted... Um, representatives in the state about it and she yeah so it will be really interesting to see what the movie is like so it's just gonna be the two of us and I think we're gonna have a great time ma'am I think your dream has come officially true and there's free refills for both life is good right Let So how was it? Well, it uh, was definitely very warm. It was about 34 degrees. We got down to the first lake that we were going to take a look at and we didn't get access on it because the conditions just, it's called gray light. Everything was just, you couldn't see top, bottom, left, right. Everything mm -hmm. just kind of folded in on itself and there was open water. So we decided not to get out on that one. Wise decision. So then we Thank went, you, Mike. <laughs> yes. So then we went down to the second lake. Uh, we were able to get out onto that one. We did the holes that they were asking for. It was about two miles of distance between all the holes. And uh, there was 26 inches of ice, 14 inches of hard pack for a total of 40 inches on top of the water. And then uh, on our way back, 
I stopped the snow machine for a minute and the snow machine uh, went through a little bit of hard pack snow, about a foot and a half worth, which got Mike a little concerned. And he decided he didn't want to stay on the lake anymore. So we were like, okay. I told him speed is the key and he said, I don't care, I want to go. So we left, uh, we went to the, the third lake, just as kind of like an experimental to have at least a couple different areas. And that lake still the same amount of ice, but <clears throat> it's a very cold valley that's in the, in the shadows a lot. So uh, there was no open water, everything was hard packed, still same, same amount of snow and ice. But it was nice because we were able to stay there for about two hours and we happened to have a small grill and some lunch. Happened to have that with them just recently. Well, all, you know, and, and ice fishing gear, because you always need ice fishing gear. <laughs> so we fished for about two hours, we didn't catch anything. We ran into some people that were out there with their family and uh, they had caught some fish earlier that morning. But yeah, and then uh, by the time we got wrapped up and got back to the truck, it was about a couple mile drive back to the truck, uh, we got home and uh, yeah. I was glad that he was home. What is really interesting is because this year has been the most unusual yes. winter that we have ever experienced mm -hmm. and you've been here since 1993 1993 and this has been the most the, it has been the warmest winter we've ever experienced yeah normally normally this time of the year it's still dropping well below zero and i was expecting to have 35 40 inches of ice out there at those lakes because i was the one suggested that they come out there and play with us out there so now we have to find somewhere else but that's okay well so keep what, what was it the research that you were doing because I was trying to explain it however I don't think I did so well. So there's a, a guard unit out of New York and they fly C-130s with skis. They're the guys that have the specialty aircraft to fly into Greenland and Iceland and just learn land on ice. So they, they don't even use wheels most of the time. They have the capability to but they have giant skis on their airplanes. And what, what is their mission? Their mission is Arctic research development and they're trying to get into the more the domestic operations, which is what the, the guard is going towards for the air side. The Army's always been domestic operations focused. Um, so we figured that we could use their planes in the state of Alaska in case we ever had an issue where you had a down pilot or a situation happened in a remote village and you know, we can get a lot of stuff in on a C-130 pretty quick. That's true. So Because bush planes, you know, they, they just can't carry the weight that needs yeah, to be Yeah, you can get carried. people out in bush planes and, you know, 100, 200 pounds of gear, but when you need to start bringing in... In a case of emergency, there's no way that that would be feasible. Not, not in one big fail swoop, like what you can do with a C-130. So you're going to stay connected with them? To yes. A... We're, we're continuing to try to find them extra places to go. Uh, another guy... That, that I work with doing this type of mission set. He, he lives down on Anchorage, and he went and checked out a couple lakes down on Anchorage, and we always have the ocean, but that would make us uh, have another location that's a lot further out than what we want. We wanna see if we can get them in the interior of Alaska. So those are the type of sacrifices that they make. I had to sacrifice a day of leave and, and snow machining. I mean, yeah. He probably all made it up, so just so that he could go on an adventure. I'm always, I'm always <laughs> there for snow machine trips. Well, we had an amazing day homeschooling, Good. and we had an amazing day. Amy and I went to the movie theater. That was really fantastic. It's so important to spend that time, sometimes one on one, -on -one with one of your children, because mm -hmm. it's, we're always all together, especially homeschooling. So that was very special to just, you know, make sure that you you still bond on a regular basis. And now I am whooped, and I am ready for bed. How about you? I I could I could sleep too now. Okay, so I guess we're calling it a night and stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe. What else comes with breakup in spring? The the trees thaw, which means the water starts to flow back from the ground, which on birch trees means birch water. And birch water is what you need to make homemade birch syrup. So in the next video we're gonna take you guys along as we tap trees and harvest the birch water and make birch syrup out of them. So with that being said, thank you so much for coming along on our adventures and experiencing life in Alaska with us. Bye. Bye.